Ah, oh, what is that dinky little Godzilla topper there? I mean, it's nothing compared to Atomic Godzilla number two. We're back with another mod installation tutorial. This time, this is the Atomic Godzilla number two made by Mojo Mods or Jazz Boost on the Pinside forums. This mod was actually originally made popular by the Atomic Godzilla number one, which was a replacement for the original Godzilla in the playfield. It lit up on the spines, it connected to the lolly kit that Stumbler provides. Um, I have the D panel version of the mod there, so I was really excited to get on the list for Atomic Godzilla. And I was originally planning to use Atomic Godzilla number one to replace my topper, but he got so many requests to make a topper specific version. This is it. He created a completely brand new mold just for this topper. This is my first time seeing this figure in person. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks like a custom resin sculpt that has this nice clear blue spines here that lights up. The mouth itself is also clear blue, so that's gonna light up. Everything is custom painted and airbrushed with the green that matches the exact kind of scheme of that original Godzilla there. So I love the quality of this figure. It feels really nice in hand. I can't wait to get this installed. It's gonna look super clean. Other things that are involved in the package that he sends to you, this is a nice little extra blast that is gonna go around the cloud there. So let an extra blast effect there. And then lastly, you got some of the cables as well as the lolly kit that you're gonna be installing everything. Here are the instructions to be able to install this as well. Who's got a bigger bulge, uh, Godzilla or the Paris Pole Vaulter? So here's a close-up of the original Godzilla figure that's on the topper right now. You can see it was the same Godzilla figure in the playfield originally, but you can see the details of it aren't that great. It's kind of dopey looking. Uh, there it is going off into track mode with the cloud and the buildings. It is a nice effect as you see this in person. I know people originally didn't think this topper was worth the grand, um, but you know, after we do this mod, it might be worth the $1,300 because it cost 300 bucks for that other figure to get here. We'll see if it's worth it. I think it is. So for installation, it is recommended to take this off the actual pinball itself. We're gonna have to wire some of those wires coming out of this back hole and then down into the back box too. So we're gonna take this off and then get it installed. All right, we removed the four screws from the topper. Uh, we got rid of the ferrite uh, tubes on the cables down here, which is the Cat6 uh, info cable, as well as the power cable. This is gonna slide back up through these uh, connector holes here. All right, now place your topper on a clean, flat surface, or in my case, a wobbly pinball machine. So don't do this. I just wanted to do this for the sake of the video to make it nice and clean. First off, we're gonna remove the four, or sorry, um, three nuts that are tying down the original Godzilla piece. Uh, this is a 5.16 screw, so you just wanna be able to unscrew those, and then we can lift off the original Godzilla and say goodbye, bye-bye, bye. All right, next up, we're gonna grab our Atomic Godzilla 2 peel off the clear protection from the bottom of this uh, plastic acrylic section here. Then we're gonna line up our screws and have the wire kind of poking out um, out the back side here. Uh, and it's gonna go along the side of the front of the building. So let's make sure it goes on the back side there. The holes are gonna line up there. Um, and then the middle screw in between his legs are gonna be the ones that are the hardest to line up and be able to get the screw down. So just be careful once we get the screw underneath the legs there. We're gonna carefully use our hands to just lightly turn it and then we're going to tighten it into place using a needle nose plier. All right, he's installed down pretty well. Uh, next up for the wires, I think the best way in terms of the instructions, it says to take the wire and kind of line it in between the plastic of here and the front of the building. And then it's gonna come along the side. So the black part is gonna stay hidden along there. And then we're gonna soak it down the middle, down the wires here into the back. Next, let's remove the front of the cloud. Now we're gonna install the extra blue effect for the cloud. So peel off the extra plastic that's covering. Uh, this is a nice piece of a crut acrylic here, uh, and it is sharp as he notes in the instructions, so make sure you don't break off any of the pieces. So many little details on this thing as well. I love even this tiny little detail on the breath portion of it, these tiny blue parts. This is going to look really nice when it's all lit up. All right, to get access to this backside, there's actually a Phillips screwdriver behind here, so we're not going to be able to get access to that. So let's take this off from the whole bolt here. That way we can get easier access to the back side and that way we can remove this. On the back side of here, let's carefully unplug this. This might be a little extra step you might need to do. 
but on the back side, uh, these are Phillips screwdrivers and it's hard to reach there. So we're gonna remove this and then soak this bolt through and put this in between the back side. Now that the screws are removed, we're gonna line up the holes, make sure that they're nice and clean with that nice blue acrylic on the back side. Um, hopefully we'll be able to just flip this around and then stick this through the hole right here. It may take a little while for you to line it up, but hopefully this should fit through and give you enough space to put that nut back on top of this bolt on the front side. So that's one, this is two, and then let's bolt it on the front. Now here's the light sensor that's required to be able to actually activate the Atomic Godzilla. So you can choose which sensor that lights up that's gonna activate this. So it gives you two options in the instructions. This is option number one right here, which lights up the Atomic Godzilla more. And then there's also this option number here where you put up these four LEDs that kind of matches when he does the breath out. So this one lights up less. I'm gonna go with this option here because if I bought this Atomic Godzilla, I want it to be going off uh, as much as it can and make it look freaking cool when this is activated. So we're gonna peel back the tape here this sensor uh, should have enough clearance and it has a little bit of an edge to be able to cover the sensor oh, I finally got it I finally got an edge uh, double-sided tape this is probably the hardest part of the install was the double-sided tape all right we're gonna use our three-sided or sorry 3m double-sided tape to cover up this sensor right there and the reason why I did this before the installation was that way I would have a little bit of slack uh, to be able to make sure this goes underneath this paint right here. So when we stick this back on um, to the front of this portion right there, I wanna make sure that this kinda tucks in front of this and then underneath this side there. So that way we can get it on top and it's gonna be a little bit of clearance to go underneath the section there. I might even just do this underneath to make it like super clean, might as well. Hide all the wires, hide all the wires. There it is, so now it's tucked in right behind there and I can get this to go behind this with the rest of the install. So let's finish this up and put this back in. Let's replace the cloud plume back on. There it is, oh, look at that, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, now we have the wire from our Godzilla and the sensor that we need to tuck into the existing wire section here to make it clean. All right, so this might be the next trickiest part. We gotta get the wires from the Atomic Godzilla and the sensor um, soaked through the same cables that are coming through here. So they gotta go under this first building and then through this bottom section right here where all those cables are coming through, it's gonna come out the bottom where the rest of these cables are. So this might be a little bit tricky. Um, you know, it might even just take off this whole back plate of the buildings here just to make it a little bit easier. Um, but if you don't wanna do that, we can kind of mess with this and stick it underneath stick it through the bottom side. And if there's enough slack, we should be able to kind of see it popping through here. And look, I was able to pull it down. So that's maybe one of the easier ways you can do it. If you can kind of slickly kind of just stick it through, then on the bottom side, you should be able to pull it through. So I'm gonna try it again with the other cable. This is a three pin connector. It's a little bit tricky, but if let's put it underneath there, kind of push it back a little bit towards the back. And hopefully on the bottom side, we should be able to see it and then pull it down and through. There it is. Ah, we did it. So let's pull that one through. Make sure it doesn't get caught on anything else. Coming all the way down and through. Oh, caught on that cable. All right. Now we are ready to put this back on top, reinstall it, and wire this back down into the back box. One of the things to note here is that the foot of the actual Godzilla does stick out a little bit on the edge there. Um, so they're saying when we lift up the play field, be careful about the play field hitting this portion of it. So let's check it out. So I do wanna say it's slightly touching and resting the foot. So you just wanna be a little bit careful about that. It's barely clearing the foot there, you can see. Uh, so it's not too bad on, on my end, but just something to be wary about when you're doing maintenance on your playfoot that it's not damaging this. Next up, we're gonna install the power cable, uh, which goes into the CN11 port on your um, board here. Uh, this is a splitter that's provided by Stumbler, which is their splitter plus board. It allows me to add in five additional CN11 mods, but I'm already out of space. I'm on my fifth little mod here. Um, and I'm definitely planning to do more because I have the other building on order from Stumbler. So we're gonna need a secondary splitter board soon. I gotta figure out how 
to do that. I might reach out to Davey. Um, but we're gonna soak through this through the back of the cable up into the back box, and now we're gonna install the lolly board. All right, so I just grabbed the wire from the back. I'm gonna make sure it follows along the cords to make it nice and clean. Once we have this, it's gonna kind of go through the hole on the back of the back box right there. And now that we have all of our wires hanging, let's get everything plugged back in appropriately and install the lolly board. All right, here's our lolly board that is actually provided by our good friends from Stumbler Pinball. So nice of them to be collaborating with Mojo Mods to do this. It's really awesome to see modders helping each other out. First thing we're gonna do is attach this bracket. We're gonna connect it to uh, the board, just like so, just make sure it's oriented on the top. There are two little screws that are provided here. So we're going to carefully put it in and try not to drop it. All right, just above the power supply area, this is going to be our target bracket to be able to attach that lolly mod to. Let's take that out. All right, we're going to carefully put that back on here, as well as our cable tie, maybe on this side. So it can be a little bit out of the way. And then we're going to put the nut back on. This is what it looks like when it's installed. All right, now this is important. This is J1 and J2. They're the same size um, connection. So the power from the CN11 on the front of the board goes into uh, J1 right here. And then the light sensor from the topper section, which is that same size cable right there, this one goes into J2. So make sure those go into the right sections, otherwise it will not work properly. Power and then the light sensor. And the last thing is this is the actual um, other Godzilla power right there. So this is gonna plug into the other side and that's it. So let's turn everything on. I'm probably gonna make sure everything is nice and tidy up in a little bit, but let's see if it actually works. All right, let's slip on Godzilla for the first time and check it out. And there it is. The Jazz Boosh Mojo Mods Atomic Godzilla is alive, looking good with those glowing blue spikes there, the eyes and the mouth. Just put that finishing touch on this, looking menacing and grim. Oh, that looks so good. Ah, oh, this is really cool. The lolly mods there from Stumbler, making the lights just kind of glow and just little trickle and flickers, just like the Neon Tokyo sign building that does this little flicker there. And then once the light sensor goes off, oh, it just, it just did it. And so now it does that little flowing light once there's a light sensor from the plume cloud that's there. So that's really cool. Anytime it senses the light coming off from the cloud, it's gonna do that additional kind of flaring wave motion there. Um, so very cool. Oh my goodness, I love it. Look at the extra little blue accents around the plume cloud there. So there's the topper in action. Again, worth a thousand bucks? I don't know, but you know, once you have this on there, it's looking pretty menacing. I mean, you have this guy, or you have this guy. This is the original Godzilla. Hi, I'm Godzilla. And then you got Atomic Godzilla number two. It's looking really good. So let me know in the comments what you think about this topper. Oh, it looks so good, especially with that glowing blue light. Mm, man, it's looking good and good. So final thoughts, I actually finally understand what he meant by option one versus option two. I took out the cloud and actually moved it from option one to option two up here so that uh, since it's glowing the full time, I really want this effect to be actually 
rolling and flowing only when the fire breath uh, portion comes out because I found out during gameplay this bottom section of the plume actually stays lit up when the background is on fire too and so it looks much cooler once this is lit up and then it looks like a nice cool effect when he's shooting fire so when this sensor is on this fourth LED there you can see it lighting blue that's what activates the flowing portion of it versus just the standard red LEDs that would be here if it's on fire um, so I think that makes sense I like option two so thank you again for that recommendation Mojo Mods Atomic Godzilla number two looking super good. Highly recommend this mod. I don't know if it's completely worth it for the $100 topper plus this, but I've been loving all the mods to my Godzilla and I absolutely love this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks.